do a good work in your life. Let it simplify and purify and unify you. Prepare now for that next scheduled loss. Make up your mind to take the risk of entering into the losses of others. Now, when I and ask yourself the tough questions, God, what are you trying to say to me in this loss? Now I can tell you, losses are horrible if you do them alone. If you're losing in your life, if there's problems in your life, if you're failing in your life, and you're stuffing it and doing it alone, that's close to hell because what is hell? Nobody else is in there, not even God. That's a horrible life. When you lose, when you lose, not if you lose, invite others in. I can tell you the sweetest moments I've ever had are when people are starting to tell me their losses. And we pray, and God is there in a powerful way. It's powerful. Or when I've opened up, how God is present there. There's a fellowship of the sufferings. There's, there's something sweet there. I mean, when, when Irene shared that little thing up here, it was a big thing for her. Some of us had tears in our eyes. We were sharing. It wasn't alone anymore. There was a lift. God must increase and we must decrease. We must lose our life. Be suspicious of a victory hardened heart. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you for the Lord. This is a tough message because Intellectually, we may be able to grasp it. But down in our heart, it's, it's hard to be. That honest about who we really are with each other. We want to give our best impressions. <coughs> but Lord, you didn't come and die on the cross, and you did rise from the grave for a bunch of winners. You did it for us. Because we need you. And I want to thank you, Lord. Help us to know how to handle loss. And to move forward with the courage. in our trust in you. Thank you, Father. I like this quote. <coughs> Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It's the courage to continue. That counts. I can guarantee if you give up, if you stop trying, if your heart's not in it anymore, it's over. It'll be over for your marriage. It'll be over for anything that's important. Finding life in unlikely places. That truly was a hard message. And many of us have experienced losses in our life. And I was thinking about that as Ron was speaking. Um, I remember one loss, and that was when we lost our five-month-old son to Crib's death. Um, and I remember asking the pastor that was preaching the funeral to talk about salvation. I wanted salvation preached. And one thing he says he said was, 
you know, once that you are in that casket, I can no longer help you. Your, your eternity is already set. But today, you have the opportunity of changing that, your eternity. And six people raised their hand to accept Christ. In my loss, there was a gate for the kingdom of God. And so this message touched that spot in me. And I really appreciated that message. I also wanted to tell the rest of the story that I told earlier today. After Ron came in and he kind of gave me some instruction about getting some of this stuff out of there, the anger and the hurt, um, and putting that person up against the freezer and talking to him <laughs> like, like I would have, that person was really there. This person came, came in twice that day, and he usually does. He came in the morning and then he came in the afternoon. So I took him aside when he came up, and, and um, I said, you know the comment you made this morning? I said, and I told him, I, I and he said about all the donuts being gone, he said, you're a donut shop that's you know, supposed to be there. And I said, no, about you saying that I ate all the donuts. And he goes, what? You took offense to that? And I said, I did. And he said, I'm sorry. I, wouldn't have, I would, don't mean to hurt you. I didn't mean to hurt you or something to that effect. And he said, boy, you're really sensitive. And I said, is it okay that I'm sensitive? And he said, yeah. And he said, do you want me to leave? And I said, no, I don't want you to leave. You said you were sorry. And he said, so case closed? And I said, case closed. So we moved on. But I wanted to give you the rest of the story because that was showing, showing him a boundary of respect of me being an employee. And also, I forget exactly how Ron said it, but it also said some things about him because he was willing to leave. So he was willing to, he, he came to a place where he was more considerate of me at that point than he was anything else. So I really praise God for that. I really praise God for this message. And I, I praise God for this, the, the one thing that Ron says, what is the one thing holding you or me back from doing what God is asking you to do or to give up? And maybe today you didn't get an answer to that. Some of us already know the answer. All we need to do is take action and take a step forward and, and do what God's asking us to do. Some of us may not have heard what that is or what God wants us to give up. So like Ron said, let's pray about that this week with earnesty. I don't think these words were spoken just to fall to the ground. There's a reason they were spoken. There's a reason he gave that message. So let's look at it deeply this week and look at what it is that God wants us to do and what he's or what he's asking us to give up. So I just, I really appreciate the message, Ron. Thank you so much. And um, so we will have some announcements.